We're rolling, Marianne, so if you're ready, you can begin. Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Okay, did everyone receive copies of the minutes from last month? Thank you very much, Paul, for sending those out. And has everyone had a chance to look at those? Uh -huh. Are there any additions or corrections? <coughs> if not, let's um, accept the meetings as written and as filed. So, I'll I, so I so move, Marianne. Thank you. All I second. Thank you. <laughs> Is everybody in favor of this? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, let me see. Our next meeting will be April the 12th and at 5.30 p.m. So okay. I hope everybody's prepared for that. Okay. Um, new business. We have the design review um, to look at for the Bagel Street Deli. So everyone got the plans that Paul sent out, I believe. Mm -hmm. And we've all had a chance to look those over. And what kind of comments do we have about those? I know there were some concerns about awnings. And I looked up a technical preservation bulletin, as you can see, about awnings. And uh, that tells, we, tells us all we need to comply with our guidelines and following the Secretary of the Interior standards. And that's what this would do. So it's technical preservation brief number 44, the use of awnings on historic buildings, repair, replacement, and new design. So I hope everybody's had a chance to look at that. I did not, no. I'll have to defer to you for the compliance of this particular design to that technical bulletin, if in fact you're saying that we should follow what's recommended in the technical bulletin. We really need to because that's what our okay. design guidelines say. Fine, that's good, okay. Standards. I was wondering if John, hi John, if um, you could just take a minute to narratively walk us through the scope of the project as if you were presenting to, I don't know, uh, well, to us. Let's just leave it at that, yeah. Sure, and actually, um, I have made a few tweaks to the drawings since the ones you've seen mm -hmm. um, to kind of accommodate a couple of comments that we have seen um, ahead of this meeting. And so I do have those um, and I will share them right now. Um, and I will walk you kind of through the whole scope of the project at the same time. But I will start with the pretty pictures and the uh, changes to the awnings. Marianne, is that okay with you that we do this? Right, I mean, as long as they comply with what we, what we need to have, so sure. <laughs> no, I mean, is it all right for John to walk me through it? Well, can he walk all of us through it? Yep, you yeah. all get yeah. it at the same okay. time. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, John. So I, I guess first, before I go through the actual drawings, I'm going to show you a couple of old historical pictures of the building itself. I was hoping you would find those. So the picture, can you see my screen, everyone? Yes. Okay, so this is the original front of the building when it was originally built for the shoe bazaar and john, I, hey john i think you want to make sure that is actually the old mount laurel building too you're showing now right which is the building that's really subject of change here yeah correct okay yep so this is what is well was mount laurel but um, was originally the shoe bazaar um, as you can see, there was a very large radius awning that projected all the way across to the curb of the street. So it actually covered the entire sidewalk. Um, is that a shed awning or is it curved? I can't really tell. It is, it is curved. Really? Yep. 
When was this picture taken? Do you have any idea? Yeah, hang on. There's actually literature right here. Um, see if I can get your guys' faces off my screen so I might be able to see the... <laughs> Uh, hang on a second. Shoot. This is Megan from Bagel Street. Um, hello, everybody. The that and what he's trying to find there, it's on the side. This was in 1884 is when it was constructed. I don't know if the, if the picture was exactly in 1884, but that's when this article says that Peter Kern put up his show bazaar. Um, and this was out of the Athens Atlas. So this is late 1800s. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. I figured I might be able to find it faster than you go into your other computer. Yeah, I had to go to another computer. I, I figured, yeah. I do uh, this off of my uh, tablets. So. Yeah, understood. Um, so anyways, it was, I knew it was 1800s, but she gave me the exact year there. So this is an article kind of telling about the original um, construction of the property. Um, so now I will show you. This is from the 70s when it was the head seller general store. And As you can see, it just had a very small projection of an awning underneath a large flat sign. Um, I don't see your picture. Yeah. Oh, it pulls. Nor do I. Hang on. See that? Yep. Yep. So this is from the mid seventies, um, the head seller. And as you can also see at some point in time, there was a, the actual whole storefront was slightly modified and there's now a front entry door to the upstairs apartments that was not in the original picture. Right. <clears throat> but those um, Mornings that are shown there, aren't they canvas? I know the one on Carol Lee was. Um, I think the, by looking at the Carol Lee awning, I actually believe that was a framed projected uh, section with some canvas uh, just frills on the bottom. And those look like actual shingle roof on that framing to me. Um, I can't see the roof at all. I just see the. Well, if you look at the Carol Lee on it, you can see a lot of horizontal lines. That's as far as I can zoom into the picture. But those all appear to be shingles. And then there's just a vinyl kind of uh, border. It's called, a, it's called a valence. Thank you. Valence. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thunk, huh? <laughs> so. Um, and then the head cellar, which is the building we're looking at, is uh, just a very small projecting awning underneath the, the store sign there. But what what is that? Is that canvas? It's rolled up, it looks like. like. It looks like it has a valance also on the bottom, but it looks like it may be a metal panel of some sort that projects out just a foot and a half where the snow's laying on it, you can see. Aha, uh -huh, that's snow, Marianne. Oh, I couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> I didn't know either. I thought it was just a really wrecked canvas. <laughs> no, it's snow laying on top of it. You look there in the alley by the big white uh, station wagon, you can see there's snow in the alleyway is also. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. And uh, about three feet of ice hanging off the bank roof there. Yeah, I see it, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. you've done great. That's great, John, to have these pictures. Thank you so much. It's so helpful. So Thank now you. I'm taking pictures. I'm taking screen pictures of this so that I can refer to them later if I need to. That's great. Good job, John. So now All if right. you can see my screen, um, these yeah. are some, this is the uh, elevation and that we have modified to uh, 
change the awning on the what's Mountain Laurel slash the new addition to Bagel Street. Um, so part of what they've chose to do originally before we even got into this situation is um, to remove the painting over the existing brick um, to expose the original brick um, without the paint. And they are planning to do that with a restoration company that we know. Um, and they will be removing the paint, exposing the brick um, back to its original look. Why do they want to do that? I'm asking, playing devil's advocate here, because chances are the bricks won't match on the two buildings. And if it's already... That's all right. What? Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I interrupted you. No, if it's already painted... Well, it's sort of here. painted. The paint's about 20% left. It's completely, basically deteriorated and gone. From which one? From the right-hand side building, which is the old Mountain Laurel building. But if it's still the Secretary of the Interior standard in painted, they're... If it's so deteriorated that you could almost brush it off, it would be advisable to try to brush it off, you know, without any kind of wire brush or some soft way to do it if possible. Oh, yeah, sure. They make uh, very low um, VOC content and very um, light detergent cleaners that they will use to remove this with low pressure water. I mean, they will not be aggressively going at this, uh, doing any kind of abrasiveness or anything. Um, for the most part, a lot of it would come off with general water pressure in a lot of areas. Um, you know how, how much water pressure should be less than 400 pounds per square inch? Uh, yeah, I'm talking maybe like Athens, 125 pounds of water pressure or the garden hose. Um, so I, <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, that's, it wouldn't be a very, a, a, yeah. Cause the other thing is if we do it too aggressive with well, them, we're potentially going to damage the brick, which no one wants to do because that's what we want as the finished product. Hey, John, can you hear yep. me? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I haven't been able to see it up hand, but I've also downloaded a lot of photographs and it looks to me like the brick work on the Mount Laurel building is that been added also over time? Is that was changed when they did the modification for sure. the entrance, possibly? Because it doesn't look like the same brick that's on the upper portions of that building. Well, but so if you go, if I went back to the pictures, which I can email to all of you. Um, so originally the building was just brick. When they redid the front facade and changed it and added the doorway, and this is just <laughs> kind of a little bit of uh, presumption because I can't see the period of time between the 1800s and 1970s, um, but they added on a veneer of that embossed replica stone that only goes up to about two and a half feet below the windows of the second floor which is where you see the green band stop and transition to yellow paint. And that is in very bad shape and is in some places just falling off the building. So we would also like to remove that and expose the original brick. Um, and, and honestly, there won't be a whole lot of it left. Um, with the layout that we have going on for the front area of this building. Just one other point. I was able, and again, I'm trying to blow up old photographs here, just mm -hmm. like you are, and you can go look at it, but it looked to me like the replacement or the lower, the, the brick that you're talking about, it's in the same plane as the brick nah, above. There's Not, a two, there's about an inch and a half or two inch ledge. Okay. So it's just a slab that's been applied to the existing building then. It's, it's not like really a good. stamped embossed. Um, and it's just, it's been mortared to the building with a, over the brick. Okay. And okay. where it's falling off, the lath's pulling off. 
And you can see the original brick that matches the upper brick right behind it. Okay, fine. So they're not really trying to save that brick that's the veneer on there. That's going to be removed to the yeah, original. It's not like I said, it's just some kind of uh, face applied mortar stamped uh, faux stone. It's not even a true masonry product. Right. And this was all the Mountain Laurel building. It's easy to see. Obviously, it's easy to see the building as is right now. If you go to Google, Google yeah. Earth and look at Main Street, you can look and see that that. There's a, diff a definite distinct difference in the types of brick there. Yeah, actually, let me show you that really fast since you brought that up. Because it is very easy to see the difference when what I'm talking about even. If I can find myself... Just in the process while he's doing that, and I'm sure Megan can tell you more about it, but it, I've been able to download photographs of the Bagel Street Deli from 1994. That's when that original canopy was or somewhere about then was put onto that building, the Bagel Street Deli. When it opened, I think it must have been around there sometime. So it's been over there 30 years. Yeah, it was 1994. You're totally correct. That's what I was doing. <laughs> okay. So, as you can see, that front, so there is a ledge just about three courses below the windows of where right. the surface applied stuck on faux stone was applied to the building. And down around the corners of the that glass area, some other places above, it's delaminating off the face of the building and falling apart. Um, so one, I, it's not really historical period products, but it's also potentially a hazard. No, good luck. I hope when you get it off yeah. enough you know, solid masonry behind there that you can salvage. You know, there may be a reason that they put that there because of some damage or deterioration that had happened to that brick or some old signs that they had up there when they took down that ripped out big holes or something. So you are, you don't know what's concealed under there. What will you do when, if you find an unacceptable substrate, when you take off this veneer, this, you know, it's like a Z stone, yeah, um, I, I guess I would default to that's why we've hired a um, very high experience, uh, or I should say they have, not we. Um, we'll be hiring a very experienced uh, masonry restoration company that will be able to cut, remove, patch, repair as needed for any instance that is uh, discovered behind this. And I, and I guess my feeling is, Pam, is you're probably right. And it was easier to do this than fix it correctly. That's probably true. And and you may end up having to, you know, come back and say, we've got to do some cosmetic remedy and, you know, we'll help you out or we'll opine on what direction to go in. I mean, there's a, a limit to what we can expect people to do. Typically the bulwark or what's it really down low, what meets the sidewalk, those first couple feet that come up from the sidewalk, typically that bulwark area was a different material. It was a stone in most storefronts of this era. I have to go back to that original photograph to see if, if the brick went all the way to the sidewalk yeah. or whether there was a slight change at the bulwark. Yeah, there, right. So, you know, we'll just, that'll be interesting to see. Good luck. Good luck. Well, I can tell you from it's, the one place that we can see really well that there's a large crack in that, um, that faux stonework that there is brick at least a foot off the ground. Um, I can right. I can, if I blow up that one corner, it looks like that might be some stone, but I can't tell. Yeah. Well, you can you can tell right away that there's not going to be stone around that new doorway or there's not going to be original brick because that doorway did not exist 
in the original construction. So it looked like it was there. If you could go back to that last picture. No, there was no door there. Was it? I mean, go ahead, John. Can you pull it back? Now, right there's the column that comes down beside the original storefront. That is the the small split between the Bagel Street building and what was Mountain Laurel Mountain. now additional Bagel Street. They've reduced the storefront down and added that doorway right here. But isn't that a a way to get in or no? I don't know what that is. No, the door on the left in the so this door on the left right here is actually the door to the apartments upstairs. Right. I know, but it looks like it was there in this old photo. Um, better go back and show her again. I will. <laughs> I the this entrance door to the apartment the when it was street. built was all the way in the back on the inside. We found remnants of the stairs up in the yes. ceiling. So they would have had an interior stair to get to the yeah, second floor. Yeah, and it floor. was from the back yeah. all the way up. Okay. Yeah. Correct. It's interesting, too, that the Kara Lee building does not really have any exterior sidewalls. It, uh, its uh, bearing is either in the adjacent structure, which on this picture is the head cellar, or the old Woolworths building. Because if you follow the lines down from those buildings, that brickwork on that Kara Lee building, it doesn't go to the ground. Correct. It's bearing on the two adjacent structures. It's, I mean, that's what it looks like to me. From There's the a slight of offset there in the building. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you're correct, JV. They're, they're all definitely sharing walls. Party. Party. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad term in the code book. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, what... John, let's let's keep moving on here. Yep. What are your plans for the upper windows? As is. What are your plans for the storefront? So below. So the the let me pull up the actual plan view here so you can see it better. Um maybe. Um so anyways, let me go over this real quick, Pam, just to finish this up. So if you look at the north elevation yes. side view, we've changed the, the, the look of the awning to be a more um, lean-to type um, awning. Just a shed. Of, just shed a shed roof. type roof. Um, just a shed, right? Yep. Would you, it looks like it, you know, but would you consider using canvas rather than plastic? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, actually, I and Megan, you can cut me off if you want to, but per discussions mm -hmm. we've had, um, they will actually use the a, a canvas type product, um, and they also have plans to recover the existing Bagel Street and would use a similar material for it, not the plastic vinyl type that is covering the Bagel Street awning right now. That sounds wonderful. Is the vinyl coated acceptable? Vinyl coated canvas. They have that. You got written aluminum, so I don't know what that, that you say. Aluminum awning by manufacturer. Oh, framing. The framing. All right. So you're going to use some umbrella fabric or something. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Like the vinyl coated canvas. Yeah. Yeah, real canvas won't hold up, right? Right. Or we'll have to hire somebody to clean it every day. Right. <laughs> okay, keep going with your explanation about the doors, windows, the yep. bulkhead, so all that stuff. <laughs> the doors and the windows that you see in this elevation right here are back at the same plane as the entry to the building now. Um, Correct. No change there. Depth-wise, that's all back. Um just bringing in a little bit of the same collar scheme as Bagel Street right now. Um, and then the walkway in the center um, is also a, uh, you know, still the same walk path that is existing now. Hang on. 
Hang on a second. I'm sorry. I've got a file <laughs> I can't get to pull up here. It's all right. It's amazing that we're doing this. We should just be astounded that we can talk to one another like this under these circumstances. I agree. <laughs> so, John, you're doing beautifully, no matter what, even if you can't find your file. What's the time frame on this? Well, uh, Megan, you can maybe talk about that. What's your what's the schedule for you guys? Um, we have the plans into the state right now for approval. We're hoping to hear back in a couple weeks on that. Um, and then we'd like to get going if everything is approved. So we're hoping for three to four months. Three to four months for what? To be done. Oh, okay. Is that what you're asking? Timeline for the project? <laughs> yes. Yes, that is what I'm asking. Yeah. Um, you have a, an application into the city also? Yes. We have a preliminary one in waiting on this discussion. Yes, of course. That's important for us as we try and not want to in any way impede you, but we do need enough time to review the, the design work. So it helps to know that this isn't a project for 2022. No, this is a project for right now. Gotcha. That's really what I, I'm gotcha. hearing you yeah. tell. And yeah. so, so for us to, to dilly dally around is not going to help you one bit. That so would, that yeah, helps me or not. Yes. Yeah. We didn't realize that. Um, we didn't realize that this committee existed, to be honest with you. So we're trying to kind of play catch up a little bit because we didn't realize that this was something we did need to go through. So we kind of do have our ducks in a row in terms of John's worked really hard on our plans. We've put stuff into the city. The state has our, it, nothing's been approved yet, obviously. But um, yeah, we do want to get moving on it as quickly as possible. Well, we're, we're a relatively new committee, so it's understandable you wouldn't know about us. And the pandemic has not allowed us to, yeah. to be too public either. True. True. Okay. So now can everyone see the drawing that's up on my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So these are the drawings that have been submitted to the state. 99% um, of it has been submitted pre uh, preliminarily to the city. Um, as you know, they will not accept a full application until I have state approved drawings. Uh, so once I receive those, they will be turned over to Mr. Riggs with the application itself, and we will follow those proper procedures. Um, so now is the floor plan. Um, and so I guess I'll speak a little bit about some of the demo ideas as they um, pertain to the front of the building so we would like to uh, remove the odd shaped uh, glass area that comes into the building um, to accommodate a little bit of outdoor dining space. If you look at the bottom floor plan on the sheet, you'll see that we're not, we're not ridding of the line work of what's there currently. We're leaving the walkway as it, is with concrete and then kind of accenting the old building lines with uh, quarry tile um, for the seating areas on each side of the walkway into the building. And that was to still just kind of give the building some of the lines that it originally has, um, but to still accommodate some, you know, changes and, um, and to do a little bit of the outdoor seating area. We Did also... On that 1884 picture, there were benches and seating out front, which I thought was kind of um, instead of a display window. Um, that that was a common thing back in the day, right? Um, and we there's not a lot of outdoor seating in Athens, um, so we thought that would be kind of a neat way to tie together. Plus, with COVID and everybody wanting to eat outside, right? Um, it was kind of a triple whammy. So yeah, that's why we thought seating outside might be kind of a neat opportunity. What's the outside seating capacity? Four. Oh, just, four. yeah, just that. It's not big. <laughs> three or One, four. Two, three, four. Yeah, right. Two I just in the bottom there left-hand side of my screen. Four people. The two tables. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And then just to give that kind of same sight line as where the glass would be um, plane wise, um, we've put in a, few, a couple of small, just vertical railing sections to kind of just give it that defined line there at the front as well. Which you they look, oh, the, those handrails, to me, when I looked at, first looked at the east elevation of your drawings, those handrails, I, I, I went, was confused about what they were. Are they, they look like they might be plastic pipe rail or something. And I went, oh, oh that, that does, or they look like a radiator. That computer generated drawing didn't particularly excite me with those white boxes down there. So what is the nature of those handrails? And could they be more reference to the historical building? I, I noticed on the 1894 photographs that there's that large filigree of ironwork protecting the upper windows above the awnings. That was interesting. Not that you had to mimic that, but I don't know. Tell me, I guess what I want. Tell me about those railings there. That's what I kind of pictured. That's important. I pictured something to kind of mimic the window. Um, yeah, both. Wrought iron, is that what the material would be? But almost just Correct. like little wrought iron um, railings. I agree the computer generated picture isn't doing it justice, but more of a see-through wrought iron <laughs> small railing. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I pictured, yeah. Can you yeah. see my thumb, Megan? Yes. <laughs> um, put my, uh, that's, yeah, that's, that helps because the little white things there got me scared. Absolutely. So. No, that was okay. You could do something to mimic those window guards above. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. I think that's, both, yeah. that's what we were both thinking. Well, I don't know how Marianne feels about it, but as an architect design wise, it makes sense. So for me, I'm happy, but there is, uh, you know, I'm curious to see, to hear Marianne's reaction not that she has to make it right now we we could marianne and we could meet uh, uh, by our uh, i don't know paul can we meet and discuss this after this meeting on another day to get to make a final ruling what's the protocol here do we have one uh you you can't yes we can meet in quorum um provided that we have uh um, publicly announce that meeting, and I believe I believe uh, 24 hours notice of uh, publication of notification of the meeting being held um, is is required. But yes, you're you, you do not have to wait until the regular scheduled meeting in April. Um, if you wanted to call a meeting earlier than that, we can arrange for that with um, Scott and Ryan from the Government Channel. That's no problem. We just need to make sure that it's um, uh, publicly publicly announced and et cetera. So. The earliest we'd be able to do that would be probably this uh, end of this week, but uh, I'd recommend maybe next week, early next week. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to hold the project up, but I just wanted to know what our options were. But okay, thank you. Understood. I'm interrupting yeah. too much. I'm sorry. It's back to you, John. I'll zoom back out just a second. So. Um, so basically the rest of the building in, I mean, I don't, inside is kind of, uh, you know, meeting code requirements based on the change of use from the M to the A2. Um, and then uh, putting in another serving area kitchen as um, the existing Bagel Street has, um, a walk-in cooler that will serve both sides, um, as well as an office area that, they really don't currently have at the moment to kind of keep business management um, involved up in the business area. Um, and another restroom to accommodate yep. the occupancy of the building, which you'll see here kind of centrally located. Okay. I've got a um, I have a for you. Sorry, who was talking? <laughs> of course, me. <laughs> um, I was going to ask John um, or Megan, what's being done to the Bagel Street Deli facade other than that material change on the awning? Anything else other than, you know, touch up painting? What's going on there? 
I mean, absolutely nothing that I'm aware of. I would say just some touch up painting probably. Great. Okay. Thank you. That was a question we would have to have answered. Thank you so much. And I do have another question too. I see you're talking. Are you replacing any everything intact that's there now? I, you cut out halfway through. Could you repeat that, please? I wondered if you were replacing any of the windows or using what's already there. At Bagel Street side, which is staying the same. I don't hear anybody right now. So. Right. Could you answer that again, please, Megan? Sorry, on the existing side, everything is staying the same. The window is staying the same. The door is staying the same. And which side is that? Um, the smaller side, the old Carol Lee side. Okay, okay. And yeah. what about the other side? And are you replacing? Yes, yeah. Um, okay. I don't know if you can pull that one back up, John, of the front. We're trying to mimic the look of the existing side on the new side. So we're trying to put in the same type of windows. Um, you can see on the right, we're going to do two of them, but we're keeping the door in the same in the same location on the new side, just a, a, a newer door. What are the windows that are there now? What type of material? I mean, are they... Woods right there. now they have big display windows right. that are um, about a foot and a half up off of the ground. So but it would be wood surround, right? Wood surround windows. No, they're frameless. It's just solid glass. Well, what are they set in? Just a small aluminum channel. Aluminum? Yep. When were those put in, do you know? Uh, sometime between picture A and picture B. Yeah, they were in there in the 70s. Because aluminum wasn't used until, what, the 50s? Or, I don't know. I forget that. I don't know when they started using aluminum. But, uh, yeah, they're actually, I mean, they're definitely fairly newer. The glass panels even have a mm -hmm. seam in them where they rolled a radius <laughs> on it and uh, joined them with sealant. Um, so it's <laughs> definitely not uh, very old. Uh, work there. It's uh, definitely been a uh, more um, recent manufactured product. Yeah, it would not be, it would not surprise me if those windows have been replaced several times after late nights on Court Street where somebody throws something through a window. I know, especially on the northern block of Court Street, that happens um, more frequently than we would like to acknowledge. Sure. I know that too. So that's but, okay, so we're we're not going to not use historic fabric if they were wood surround windows. We have to use wood surround windows, you know, but rather than aluminum. Yeah, I mean, the, the idea is the front facade of this building, um, back in at the original plane where the door is that you'll see on the bottom left of my screen there. Um, that will be a framed wall that will have some a wood face and wood trim to kind of replicate uh, what's Bagel Street's front looks like right now. Um, so there will be wood involved in the front facade of this building. Well, just I was wondering, there, you know, that's what I was looking for. What is there now, and is that something that has been there for a while? That's all I'm looking for. Where the opening, where the window openings are on the drawing that you're looking at right now, mm -hmm. there's actually not anything there. That's the openings where someone could walk up to put a mannequin in the window or put something in the display window. Oh. There's actually not a, there's just a hole there right now. Huh. Okay. No, that looks good. Yeah. Anything else, John? Um, I'm not sure of anything that really you guys are too interested in, in plumbing okay. lines or electrical wires, but. Uh, we are working really hard on the inside to refurbish the brick as well, if that's of interest. I know that's not necessarily like a. Are you interested? Paint. Are you interested in tax credits at all? I mean, sure. <laughs> you cannot no. leave bare brick walls on the inside if you're going to go for tax credits. Okay. That actually is taking place, however. 
<laughs> Megan, we may have a side conversation about that conversation then. Okay. <laughs> okay. Megan, I can forward you information the, about tax credits if you're interested. Talking about for the historical net building. Right. And I use historical society, the preservation office. That's why I ask these questions because I, I hate to see you try to do that and then they pounce, you know. So. Well, as an outsider, meaning that I'm not an architect or a historical preservationist, but I am a member of the commission. I think this is marvelous. Uh, I think they've done a very good job of of uh, showing co being cognizant of the historical nature of the project. It looks nice. It's, it's functional. It's and uh, I want to pick up on something Pam said earlier. We don't. I don't think we should necessarily try to stand in the way of progress as long as it's done in a, 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 a matter that's consistent with our historical uh, heritage. And I think by and large, this does so. So I just would like to be on record as saying that. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I, don't, I don't, I just, I mean, I agree with each um, Richard, I couldn't think of your name, Richard. I have a question. You're doing the uh, new door. You're installing a new door to the staircase to go upstairs and a new door to the where the mountain laurel was. What is the, what are the natures of those doors? What materials are they made out of? And if you want to go back to the elevation, you can. I'll look at them that way. So the actual apartment door is the one that exists now. Gotcha. Okay. And what is that, by the way? It's just a wood six panel door. Okay. Got it. And, and the one. Yeah. The one that um, as discussions that we've had is to use a similar door to what's there, which is basically a full glass wood frame door, um, but a new one because, you know, things get wear and tear and they don't work as well as they used to. Um, and I thought. Good. I cut out. What do you say? See my thumbs. <laughs> uh, she likes I can't to see anything but my screen right now. Oh well, my thumbs are up, oh, going okay. up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to, uh, you know, interject too that uh, thanks to Pam's looking at all the little details there, which all the answers seemed correct to me too, and I think that everything you're doing seems very good. I was able to look at some early on sketches and I think this has improved considerably. And I think it's a worthy modification to accommodate commercial activities on Fort street in the day we, days we live in right now and preserving the historical nature of this structure. Fe feeling that really all the work they're doing is not affecting any of the structural elements of this building. So in 20 years, if Megan wants to change the use of this building or do other alterations to it, it's not going to really affect the historic features or nature of the building. But at the same time, what they're doing is complementing the historic features of the structure. My opinion. I'm okay with, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, if I were going to change anything, I'd get rid of the, the cedar shakes altogether. But you're not going there. You're not going, and, and that's really, you know, when the time comes and you ever want to consider replacing the cedar shakes, talk to me. They're the, they're the, they're the, they're the odd, the odd material in this mix. Everything else is going along that historic road. Well, Pam, so look, if you, if look close. I think you'll see some shakes up there and above the outdoor seating, just not to be surprised. Is that is that right? I'm Tom? just looking. I'm seeing it. Well, then yeah. I stand corrected. <laughs> John, were they painted green? It was actually, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. It was something to really just represent some texture. There's a lot of, a lot of things uh, hatch wise that don't show up well on um, CAD. And uh, so that was 
kind of an undecided thing. It was going to be wood or wood-like in nature, and that was really just the best thing we could get to show any representation of some texture out there. So um, I, I think the plan is to really just mimic the existing Bagel Street as much as possible with just wood and trim. Correct. What's on the existing Bagel Street? I'm so sorry. It's just a – it's completely wood-backed with wood – um, applied moldings to give it the depth that it has. It's yeah, not, there's, no, there's no shakes over there either. <laughs> no, it's just flat. Yeah. Well, then why do you have written cedar shakes on there? Yeah. We're you have new cedar shakes. Pardon me? We're sprucing it up. <laughs> that was a thought. Blow that up, John. I am. Zoom in. I got to remember what program I'm in first. <laughs> So this is just wood with There's no wood. shake. No, uh -uh. no. God almighty. I don't know what to say. I mean, I sure would prefer wood to cedar shakes. Are they, but are they putting, I don't know. Putting, say, I don't I don't know if it's in my purview to to even say that. I I'm sorry. I wish I were a little bit more. Yes, you need something that looks more historic in nature than cedar shakes. So just flat wood? Yeah, I mean, we can just do panel. I mean, it'll just be wood panels and trim like Bagel Street. Yeah. Well, I, w I personally would prefer that. Um, yeah, period. I would prefer that. I don't know about the rest of the group. I'm yeah. also noticing <laughs> my... Um, my Zoom thing has just gotten wonky on me here, but that's all right. I'll try and figure it out. Done speaking, yes. I agree with you, Ken. We can remove the cedar shakes, correct, Megan? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, darling, that would be wonderful. Good for you. It was all my, I'll take the blame for it all, Pam. <laughs> you know what, John? I think the reason that we said that is we were trying to bring some of the interior of Mount Laurel's look to the front. Remember we were talking about like how the Yeah, you did talk about using some of the wood that was in there and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. But uh, I'll take full blame yeah. for it. That doesn't need to be the deal breaker. Yeah, we can remove it, no problem. Okay. No. Well. Thank you. Any other questions? And there are I know in the photos it was a little misleading there are two awnings involved then right one over each doorway correct well each storefront i wouldn't say doorway we need three if we did that but oh no i don't mean the upstairs but okay but the storefronts okay that would work so there would be awnings like that and there'd be the shed type with some kind of canvassy material rather than plastic yep Oh, thank you. thank you. And then the bagel street that's from the original would stay the shape it is with a new fabric. Because it looked like the one you had on there is kind of rounded. But. Oh, yeah. We were originally the idea was to continue what they have from when Bagel Street uh, became a business and continue it across this building. Um, and, and then referencing the historical documents, we changed it to a shed. Um, right. And splitting them in the middle. Yeah, and split them up so they weren't a continuous piece. Thank you. That that looks really good to me. <laughs> okay. And that, that really meets the standards, Secretary of the Interior standards much better. So thank you. I think each one of us now has had our comments here. So thank, thank you. you very much. Now I have less hair. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Snyder didn't say anything. I guess nope, that's I good. didn't know he was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a late comer to the party. Sorry about that. But uh, I'll just echo what, uh, actually, probably the closest is what uh, Rich Better said. 
I am also the non-architect, non-historical preservation guy. However, I have a strong interest in having the main street of our town where parents come to bring their children to see if they're going to OU to be viable, uh, to be viable financially and to have a look and feel that is not all crapped up with stuff covering the building fronts, right? And so you explained, uh, takes it back much, much closer to what it would have been historically and to have a good look and feel. Uh, so I, I'm totally in favor of everything I've seen you describe. <laughs> I love the way that statement ended. That was great. Good for you, Mark. <laughs> and, and I think, Megan, I think Pam alluded to the fact that really you're the first uh, business that has can come to us for this. So we haven't really got it worked out exactly how we're going to expedite this approval process or the review process. That, and um, I'm hoping like Paul can organize some kind of a of a meeting that we and I don't know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to write or give a, a certificate of appropriateness is what the uh, uh, result is from our standpoint so that it can go forward in the process of permitting and zoning through the city. Okay. The state has nothing to do with what we're doing here, sure. but um, just bear with us for it. Hopefully it's not going to impede. Hopefully the city can still be reviewing your project. I don't know if they've stopped it because this hasn't been done. Okay, if they're still on as far as they can go, waiting on us to get state approved documents yeah. back before they'll. Approve okay, so it. then we're we're not the ones right now that everybody. I mean, we could be, but we will try our best not to be holding you up once you get your city state approved drawings to the city. So and, my, my thought on that, um, and uh, this is up for discussion, but um, it, and I, I don't want to put words in any. Preservation Board Commission members' uh, mouths, but it, it sounds as if, based on the conversation that you've all had, um, that there might it, you all might be willing to make a motion and approve tonight. I, again, I don't. I'm not trying to put words in anybody's mouths. If that's the case, I think as long as we're enumerating um, any changes or specific recommendations that were made in that motion, I heard you know the substituting the, and I'm, I'm not good with this, cedar shake for something different and the size of the awning or the fabric, making sure that whatever um, is mentioned is covered. Um, I believe we would be able to, the preservation board, when it's ready, we can, we can approve that part of it. Um, and then after the fact, um, sign off on the certificate of appropriateness for, and I, I can give you some examples, the planning commission, when it does, um, uh, it's site plan review process, which I don't believe this would fall under that anyway. Um, but when it does that, typically the, um, uh, the, you know, the, the board approves it at one meeting and then at the next meeting, uh, the secretary for the planning commission, um, has the final the official document signed in the chair of the board, the planning commission signs it at that meeting. So I think we could probably have that same process with the preservation board. I don't see why not. Is it appropriate to have a motion right now? What, uh, That's first for you of all, all to discuss. Yeah. yeah. John, do you want to make it? Well, I, well, first, just before we do that, what do we need to approve this? Do we need everybody or do we need a majority or do we need a what? I don't even know what is required from our committee? You have a quorum um, and you're in the public session. Uh, so you, those are the two main things that you'll need to, to approve anything. Um, and then uh, if, if there's a motion in the second, then you need a majority of those present to vote in favor. That's it. Okay, majority. Majority of those present, correct. Well, Pam, and, and I'm, I would make a motion to tentatively approve. I mean, we're gonna get mm -hmm. some documents from uh john aren't we with the revisions i would like get to a couple of clarifications to clarify what we've agreed upon today with replacing <laughs> the cedar shakes to just panelized flat wood facade yeah. and to uh, renote the drawing to just clarify that it will be a um the correct uh, or like fabric not a vinyl covering on the awning itself, which would just be clarifications 
um, almost one like when you do an appeal hearing at the state, um, that this is an approval condition upon those two modifications, which yes, I will send you first thing in the AM, and then you could proceed forward to do the actual, um, whatever the document name was, you just right. spoke of a minute. Well, <laughs> Uh, certificate of appropriateness for you. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also interested in the graphics. Right now, I think Bagel Street has its own logo graphics with the G that's... Megan, is that right? That Yeah, that's what's on there now, yes. Is that what you're going to be doing on the little fascia of the... I would, want to, this. I would want it to be the same on both. Yeah. So if we just, um, I'm zooming yeah. in. Hang on. There we go. Well, I, I didn't know whether this computer drawing really was reflecting the true graphics that you're going to be using. The right angle of the G and all, Pam. Aren't you good? Okay. Thank you. I was interested. Thank you. Okay, and uh, just one other small thing would be clarification and detailing on that little front guardrail that you're putting out there. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, change, change that drawing so it doesn't look like a radiator. We'll make it well, match it, these top crates. It could be more defined. And Pam, I can't think of anything else that you alluded to when you're going through point by point, which were all great. Um, the only no, me, other me neither, John. We're I think we're okay. We're getting there. Well, if, the, the biggest thing, and I have to, I think that John explained that very well, was removing the exterior uh, veneer is going to be, you know, a guessing game for now. And right. I think that as the changes have to be uh, adapted to the discovering of unforeseen conditions, he can consult with, maybe he doesn't have to come to a, a meeting with Megan to go about exactly what's going to happen but if we could have some kind of report and if there was any concerns we could bring mm -hmm. them you know bring it up in more detail um as to the solutions that you're coming up with for those unforeseen conditions but that's going to be something that it's not anything we need to write up right now it's something that we just might have to anticipate in the future okay. Perfectly said and important for John and Megan to hear. Both JV and I are cautiously optimistic that when you re remove that veneer, uh, that you'll find something that's really salvageable underneath. Cautiously optimistic. And right now you're presenting a design that's saying is we are going to be matching the brick, revealing the original brick and using that behind that veneer. That may not turn out to be possible, in which case I think you have to come back to us. And it doesn't have to be a meeting, but you have to notify us to say, guess what, guys? I hope this is okay. This isn't going to work. We're proposing this. What do you think? Because because that's an, another important issue. And I'm yeah. glad it'll be in the minutes. So we're covered. It's in the minutes. Just one other tiny Good. little. I know we're, we've been dragging this on way too long. I'm sorry. Yeah, but exactly. what, what kind of. <laughs> what kind of uh, underneath the awning are, is that awning going to have a bottom to it? Uh, are you going to be concealing that facade of the existing building? Um, that could be a problem <laughs> uh, above the, above the front entrance. You know what I'm saying? It, mm -hmm. It's not. The awning solid. is covering about four feet of the exterior wall of that building. Is that going to be concealed? What if you, you know, when you look up, Underneath that awning, what are you going to see? Uh, if right now the Bagel Street one has like a egg crate with lime up inside of it, I, I understand mean, that. That. Would, that would be, I think, what their ultimate plan would be to do the same. Um, if you want to see the facade, I doubt she's going to fight. No, I think no, I think you're opening up another can of worms if you don't do something <laughs> to conceal that. It's, it might not be good, but I don't know. I have more faith than you do, John. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's just the faith in the contractor that I know that they're hiring to do this work. And my experience okay, well, with let's, him let's, I, let's, let's I have just, no let's doubt go. he'll make it look good again. So, I mean, should we go? Do you want to make a motion? I think we should make a motion to accept the project as 
presented tonight with and modified. Uh, with the modifications uh, dealing with the uh, fabric of the awning, more detail on that. The uh, detailing in the exterior woodwork that's going to go around whatever windows, systems, and structures in this particular building. The graphics on the front of the uh, awning and the front railing. And now we have to make sure that we can, we're just focusing on the Laurel building, not the Bagel Street building, because they've made very clear they're not touching that. So everything we can respond to now is just the, the, the old Mountain Leather building, basically. I second I John's the motion. You made a motion and I second it. Thank Richard you. wants to get out of here. <laughs> okay. Now, do you I'm want hungry. To I want to go eat. <laughs> Do we do we have the wherewithal to, to I mean I'm not sure the protocol Marianne do we want to vote on this right now Okay let's leave oh, Marianne I don't I want to see the revisions before we vote on anything quite well me. you have a motion Madam Chairman and you have a second Are you saying we cannot proceed or not No I'm not saying that but I just <laughs> Well, you can vote against the motion if you wish. Uh, I would welcome you to do that. But I have made a motion, or John has made a motion, and I have seconded it. I would like to proceed. Mark Snyder is quiet right now, and he wants to disappear. But when he did speak, he was in favor of proceeding, as was Pam. Uh, I think we should. And if we have some problems down the way, uh, we'll deal with it. These are honorable people. These are not... Uh, 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 these are people who are serving our community well, and I think we should support them every way we can and give them the benefit of the doubt. Thank you. So I call for question for the question. All right. How many are in favor of this? Are we raising hands? No, say aye. 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 At least four. How many said four? Yeah. Four. I eyes. think so, Pam. I yeah, four I, eyes. I, yeah. I, yes. And I guess, may I just make, I have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask, basically. We'll be getting these plans very soon. I hope the revisions and okay. Sure. Yes. I'll have them. I'll have them to you before ten o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> Don't need a nap that. If it wasn't just me here and there was a draftsman here, you'd have them tonight. <laughs> no. And one other thing I wanted to mention too. Um, we as as. Uh, uh, certified Historic District are acting as the State Historic Preservation Office on this. Make that clear. So, you know, you're not sending your plans to the State Historic Preservation Office for review. We're doing that for them. So that's just something to make it clear. <laughs> and I, I just am so used to all the things that they look for all the time. So if I sound a little like I don't think doesn't bother me a bit. Okay, thanks. But so we have four people who voted aye, and anyone voting nay. I would like to abstain until we see the rest of the plans. Okay. I think I can do that. So all right. Is everyone in agreement with that? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. So we'll see these tomorrow. So we need to plan a time when we can get together and talk about this. And we can do that soon. This week is fine with me. Mary, and just to clarify, is the motion approved then? Is that correct? I just want to make sure for the good of the order and the minutes that we've got everything lined up. We had four vote four, so that would be a majority. Right, and one abstain. So we get the plans. So the motion was approved. I'm, I'm, is that yes, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just, just want to make sure for the minutes. <laughs> I thought we could meet sometime this week and you know, just discuss it and then go ahead with our certificate of appropriateness. Do we want an agreement with that? 
just 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 for your just, just for your awareness marianne um i will be out of the office on thursday and friday uh so if you're trying if you would like to meet this week um wednesday would be preferred for me i may not be able to attend um but if we need to get a zoom meeting set up um etc um i can help arrange that and again we would uh i'll double check but i'm pretty sure we need at least 24 hours notice of a public meeting so um ideally uh we we would confirm that tomorrow morning or something like that is wednesday all right yep. with everybody else hey paul Paul, would we have to vote on this again? Or are we just getting these documents that we want and we're going to, you know, like review them within the, our committee? And well, if they don't, if they don't object, we have no objections. We just be quiet. Right. If, if the changes that Mr. Stevenson presents are, are the changes that were um, that are in compliance with the, the vote that just occurred, um, then no, there's no vote. There's no vote needed. Um, uh but under the possibility that there's further discussion um we would and again if you have a quorum um if you're going to have any discussion about a project uh that that needs to be um and there's a quorum that needs to happen in public i understand yeah okay i just didn't know i didn't think we had to vote on this again if they submit the documents that we requested no so, so paul question then the the specific things that were requested were by our two architects, uh, Pam and John. If they would function as a subcommittee of this, of this board to simply look at what uh, John Stevenson is going to send them, would we then not need to have another meeting? We can just proceed with the vote we already had if John and Pam say yes, that's the changes we requested. I would, uh, Mark, I would need to double check on that, but I think if it's, um, if it's considered a committee of the board, um, and there's members designated for the committee, then, um, let's say you have a two person committee and those two people meet, then you have a quorum of the committee. Um, I know that's how city council does it. You know, there's city council, there's seven members, but they have multiple committees and there's usually three members or four members on a committee. Um, if, uh, for example, if, if you've got a three members of the city's city council transportation committee, um, you cannot have two or more of those members meet with city staff about a transportation issue. So, um, you can have one of them meet, but not the other two. They can't be in the same room. And so because then you might have you have a question about public um, open open meetings laws and things like that. I, I'll double check, I think, is, is the best thing I can say. I can check with our law director. So, Paul, if we created an ad hoc committee of John Ballantour and Pam Callahan to review what uh, John Stevenson is going to send them tomorrow, we could have the motion say that we proceed without the need for a second meeting then is what you believe would work. Correct. Yeah. Oh, well, I think so, Mark. I apologize. Yeah. So, Could we put Marianne on the committee, too, to yeah, make it? Yeah, three? that's yeah, that's fine. That's a good idea. To make it three. <laughs> but it, it sounds like if we're doing a meeting, it, it, the meeting might take 10 minutes and then it's adjourned as well, Mark. Exactly. So, it's, you know, yeah. we could, it could be, Let's do you that. know, the goal could be for a lunch break or something like that and make it happen to accommodate four members or more. Okay. Is Wednesday okay with everyone to do this? Yes. Okay. Me too. Yes. John? What time? Wednesday? Wednesday? <laughs> I have a Wednesday night pickleball appointment. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm serious. Take a ball under the lights. Uh, what time, Marianne? What time? What time, Marianne? Whatever's convenient. I'm free all day. So. How does noon meet? How does noon work? Oh, that's noon, good. noon on Wednesday sounds perfect. Richard? Uh, is this for the whole seven of us or just for a committee of three? Ideally, a quorum of four, I would say. At, at least and, until I get some hearing from the law director, I would recommend we have a quorum of four. I, I have a meeting in Wednesday at noon. I'm sorry. Okay. Do, do you have an alternative time you might want to suggest, two, Richard? Three, just so we can well, say two or three. John, you suggest a time. Three o'clock, okay, John? Does that give you enough time to rest up for pickleball? I think so. <laughs> or no, that's my goal. I got to get back from golf before I do that, Richard. 
<laughs> Life is tough. Life is tough. <laughs> so does three o'clock work? You, hey, you guys figure the time that works with you, and I will come. All right. Three o'clock. Mark, is that okay? Yeah, noon doesn't Mary work if it's, a, if it's the whole board, but three o'clock would work. Yeah. Am. All right. Three p.m. is fine. It's fine. All right. Good. Okay. And we do not need to attend, correct? <laughs> Just your clarification inside meeting, right? All right, That's Pam, correct. I see you your thumbs. <laughs> That's correct, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll get that set up with uh, the government channel to make sure we have all that worked out, Marianne and, and John. Okay, hey, Paul, what is the date and time that you're looking at? Uh, this would be this coming Wednesday, March 10th, uh, 3 p.m., Scott. Does that work for um, you? I guess let me double check. At three, yes, we sh we should be able to do that. Uh, mayor's press conference or mayor's weekly updates usually at two o'clock. We should be done to go at three. Okay. Great. Thanks, Scott. And just oh, to clarify on our end, after that meeting, then you guys will let us know if there's any questions or, or if you're signing off on the certificate of appropriateness and all that. Okay. Wait. Technically, Megan, we already have with just okay. a couple revisions. Yes. We Unless signed off. Yeah. Okay. That's right. As long as I do what we said I'll do. Okay. Oh, <laughs> all on you, buddy. All right, I'll send those to Paul in the morning and he can distribute them to all of you guys. And, uh, we should be good. Thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck Thank on you your project. Thank you, Megan, very, very much. So. Thank you. Tell David I said hi, Pam. <laughs> okay yep. that's our new business we have old business to discuss so um i think we have time for it i'm not sure um i think we have about five minutes marianne because of city council starts at seven. A city council meeting coming up. well i guess we can postpone this is about the prisley award which just one thing I would like to throw out, and I mentioned this to Rich, and I we discussed it briefly, but I'm not even sure we should call this the Prisley Award anymore, just an award in memory of Joanne. But should we call, call it the Prisley Award if we're going to give the award to the Presbyterian Church? It made sense for the Catholic Church. That's where she went most of her life here. But um, just something to think about, people. You don't need to answer now. And I think, have you all gotten copies of the very rough draft that I wrote or the draft that I wrote? Yeah. I hope. If not, I can send them again. And I'm working on a plaque that's going to be very simple. And I can send you copies of that on YouTube, Paul, because I haven't sent it out yet. But it's going to be, I was hoping Guy would be here because he's got the information on plaques. And the fewer yeah. words, I think the less expensive it will be, too. So that's something that was wondering about as well so um i'll send those out if you want to send comments back about the the award letter that i wrote and maybe next month we can have um, reverend martin here from the presbyterian church and that might work out well just discuss it with him and see what he has in mind for a uh, program because I think he had some thoughts about the program and how it should go and maybe even advertising this, he could help us with that or he could do it. I'm not sure what he wants to do, but it is his church. So let's let him decide that. <laughs> but uh, we'll get that together. And any other announcements or updates that we need to deal with quickly? If not, I'd say we're adjourned.